Day number 155. Name that musical. to my channel so quarantine is by no means over but but school starts for me on Monday August 17th so I thought that today we can just go through and talk about briefly the books that I have read during quarantine summer 2020 okay so as of when I'm recording this which is Friday the 14th um, I have read 73 books during quarantine, which is ridiculous, um, but I'm also kind of proud of myself because that was my one and only goal for this year. Alrighty, with that, let's get into the titles. I'm going to provide a funny, hopefully mildly witty sentence for each one, and yeah, let's, let's proceed. What I read summer 2020, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. My major takeaway from this book, Hollywood culture sucks. Macbeth, by William Shakespeare. Die, you egg! Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Yay, books are finally starting to include platonic female-male friendships. Thank goodness. We need more of those in our lives, please. The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock. Very boring. Well written, but very boring on audiobook. Henry himself. An old man ponders whether or not his life was worth anything and if he did good on this planet. I think we're all wondering that right now, considering that we cannot go outside. Did we make the most of our time out in the big wide world? I don't know. Anne of Avonlea, second installment of the Anne of Green Gables series. Do they kiss in this one? I can't remember if Anne and Gilbert kiss in this one. I hope they did. The traveling restaurant. There's a restaurant, but on a boat, and thus, it's a traveling restaurant. Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Werewolf Bar Mitzvah, spooky, scary. Please tell me what show that was, and then you can be my best friend forever, okay? Anne of the Island, the third installment of the Anne of Green Gables series. Did they kiss in this one? I can't remember. I really hope so. I really do. Man, can you please bring back Anne with an E, Netflix? That's all I ask. Everything I Never Told You, I Cried. That was also the first book I read for my booktube channel. Um, I should probably rewatch that video sometime. It's only been about four months, but I can guarantee that I will cringe at some point. The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. Major takeaway here, Judy Dench as a grouchy old socialite is like my favorite thing. Her Royal Highness, the Thanksgiving scene was hella cute. Red, white, and royal blue. Representation doesn't make a book good, but it is important, and this book is definitely full of it. Some people love it, some people hate it. I'd say I'm leaning towards the hate, but I'm in the middle. My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfeg pretty much mirrors our current situation if quarantine was voluntary. Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief lived up to the nostalgia. Thank you, Charlotte, for inspiring me to read it again. Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky, my favorite horror book of all time so far, followed by Pet Cemetery by Stephen King, which just happens to be the next book I read. Crazy. A Game of Thrones. Danny's brother sucks. I love Arya and Jon Snow. Also Tyrion Lannister. Very awesome. Very, very awesome. It's been 10 years since the last book in the Song of Ice and Fire series came out. So, George, what's what's going on there, man? Lucky in Love by Casey West. Girl wins the lottery. Girl loves anteaters. Girl falls in love at a zoo. The fill-in boyfriend. Girl is dumped at prom. Has a fill-in boyfriend that doesn't become so fill in in the future, you know what I mean? Lara Jean Covey complex here. Speaking of Lara Jean, Always and Forever, Lara Jean by Jenny Han, way better than the second book. I hated the second book. Furiously happy. A wonderful look at depression through the eyes of comedy and taxidermy raccoons. The unhoneymooners, people get food poisoning at a wedding, except for the bride's sister and the groom's brother who hate each other, so then they get to go on the honeymoon. I bet you can guess how it turns out. The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan made me cry. The Goodreads one-star reviews made me cry even harder. You can go watch those if you so wish. I will include the link to that video above. On the Fence by Casey West, my least favorite Casey West of all time. I didn't ship them and there was just a fence the whole time. Like, what was, what? I don't know. I just feel like you could have hopped the fence and like talk face to face, but I don't know. We're in the digital age. Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not 
dating. Super cute, super cute. Hazel is like Zoe de Chanel from New Girl, really. Inside Out and back again, very sad about a Vietnamese immigrant to the United States and all of the cultural barriers she faces at school, including bullying, but how she finds hope in her community and in the joy that is the papaya. My Dark Vanessa, very, very frightening. Very, 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 what did I want to say? very applicable to our times. It also had a bit of a dark academia vibe, but like emphasis on the dark. Mick Lou by Otessa Moshfeg, a drunk pilot, pilot? Mick Lou by Otessa, Mick Glue by Otessa Moshfeg. A drunk pirate may or may not have killed his best friend or something more. Wink, wink. Hint, hint. The lovely bones. Girl dies. Girl observes life go on without her. Beautiful and tragic all at once. Colorless Sakuru Tazaki and his years of pilgrimage. My first Haruki Murakami book. I liked it. There was quite a lot of smut, which I wasn't expecting, but like, that's fine. That's cool. I did quite enjoy the magical realism infused within his realistic fiction. Before we were yours. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, -S 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 Mississippi. Ooh. Mississippi River, Mississippi River, that's all I gotta say. If you like, what's his name? Huckleberry Finn, you'll probably like this a lot. Historical fiction, gotta love it. Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. I did predict the ending. I hate when I do that. I really genuinely loathe when I do that, but it was really good. You should read it. For some reason, it gives me holiday vibes, even though it's about death. With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo, my favorite Elizabeth Acevedo book. I loved it. I loved it. Imani is a single parent in high school and an aspiring chef, and she's just so determined, and I loved her so much. Lovely War by Julie Berry. Historical fiction told through the lens of Greek gods and goddesses. They're all fighting over Aphrodite, and so Aphrodite distracts them by telling a story. Classic. White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. Originally, I gave this book five stars. After doing some research, however, particularly by linguist John McWhorter, I decided that maybe it's not as great as I thought it was. It seems more like a book for educated white people to feel better about themselves than something that provides solutions to systematic and institutionalized racism. However, I do believe D'Angelo had great intentions. Something happened in our town. A black man is shot in a town. This book is a children's book following two friends who are trying to cope with what's going on and come to terms that the world can be very brutal and that they have a place in that brutality. Black Klansman. This one was so good. I still haven't seen the movie and Adam Driver's in it. So what am I waiting for? I don't know. And it's about a black police officer who goes undercover to infiltrate the Ku Klux Klan. Not well written necessarily, but the story is just riveting. The new Jim Crow is a look at the institutional and systematic racism that is pervasive in the United States prison systems. It takes a look at not only the drug war, but also the rights of prisoners and how the prison system has kind of become a new form of Jim Crow, a way to control and restrict the African American or black community through a less overt method. Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowe. Oh, the racism. The, 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 huh. I know it's meant to be like in the 90s, and I'm sure this is how teenagers talked in the 90s. Teenagers still talk like this today. It's pretty shitty. But did she have to call him stupid Asian kid like 50 million times? I don't think so. I think you could have cut like a solid... 100% of that and we would have been good to go. And then there were none by Agatha Christie. This one I actually have learned is problematic in many ways. I hadn't known this before. I learned this through Lala Loves Lit whose channel will be linked above and below. You should definitely go check out her vlog and video. Her editing is fantastic and I really learned a lot. From a mystery standpoint, I was intrigued the whole time. Kid Activists, which fittingly is about kids who grew up to be Activists, you've got the likes of Harvey Milk, Martin Luther King Jr., Harriet Tubman, Emma Watson, Malala Yousafzai, so many people, and it was really inspiring to read. Having Our Say, The Delaney Sisters' First 100 Years is a memoir following the Delaney Sisters who lived to about like 109 and 107, something like that, a really long time. They had incredible lives, they broke a lot of barriers, and they just genuinely made me smile. Probably one of my favorite books of 20 2020 so far, and one I think everyone should read. It'll entertain you, it'll amaze you, and it will just inspire you to pieces. A Caribbean Mystery by Agatha Christie. Very disappointing. I did not like it at all, but it is a Miss Marple book, and if you're really feeling in the mood for like a grandma vigilante, then this is the book or series for you. Over the Top 
Top by Jonathan Van Ness was actually very surprising to me. I didn't expect it to be bad per se, but I didn't expect it to be a 4 or 4.5 star read for me, which it was. Van Ness's story is told in such a raw and vulnerable way. The writing was actually magnificent, and I found his life story to be just fascinating and inspiring. The New Queer Conscious. This is actually part of a series of pocketbook activism. I'm not really sure what it's called, but there are many other books in the series I hope to read. This is a man's look at how he hopes the queer community will continue to evolve and be supportive uh, throughout the future. It's kind of envisioning what he hopes the queer community will become. Intersectionality is also discussed a lot in this book, which I appreciated to infinity and beyond. Night by Ellie Wiesel. I cried. The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. Absolutely hilarious. Imagine Chip and Joanna Gaines, if they hated each other, had to go on a book tour and their assistants went with them and had to like manage their petty behavior and then the assistants fall in love. It's cute. I really liked it. The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. My favorite book, really. I mean, Anne of Green Gables and The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. A lot more ambitious creatively than Everything I Never Told You. Not as well executed, in my opinion, as Everything I never told you, but nonetheless, I loved the characters, I loved the analysis of class, and the topic of adoption and interracial and transracial adoption was heavy in this book, which applies to my family quite a bit, and I enjoyed her perception and the characters' experiences with that. Naomi and Eli's No Kissed List is officially the worst book I've read of 2020. Yes? Oh, I thought someone knocked on the door. That was weird. Anyway, it sucked. It was real bad. A Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin is the second installment of the Song of Ice and Fire series. Not gonna say much because spoilers, but it was really great. I love how um, consistent his writing style is. The Whisper Man by Alex North. I thought it was gonna be scarier. Nonetheless, I really appreciated the writing style, the slow burn, the investigative side to everything, and the father-son relationship in this book was incredibly strong and impactful. Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown. Echo Brown is officially one of my new favorite authors of all time. She also has a one-woman show of which I've seen many clips on YouTube and it looks phenomenal. It is called Black Virgins Aren't for White Hipsters or something along those lines. So you know it's gonna be good. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, The Yellow Brick Road, The Yellow Brick Road. I love how they already had everything they needed inside them to succeed, but they needed to go on that journey to be validated and to learn about themselves. I think that's a really great message. The Body in the Library by Agatha Christie. Even more disappointing than a Caribbean mystery, but again, Grandma Vigilante, Chunky Sweaters, there is a library, but it's not discussed, which was disappointing. The Distance Between Us by Casey West. I genuinely can't remember what this one is about. There was a dollhouse shop, like a doll shop, that was kind of creepy, but also nostalgic and cute. So it was interesting. It was fine. Eh. The Black Flamingo by Dean Adda. I loved the window into his life, his world, and really just the world of drag in general. However, I'm not the biggest fan of books written in verse. That's just a hang-up of mine, one I need to work through. Thus, I didn't enjoy this book as much as it was hyped up to be for me. I would recommend you read it, though. Slay by Brittany Morris. One of my favorite books of 2020. A girl named Kira. She's 17. She's a senior in high school. Is a game developer. She develops a game called Slay, which is meant to be a haven for black gamers who face racism and discrimination on the internet. However, her game, her life, is put in jeopardy when Slay becomes under attack for being anti-white. The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. Fantastic book about an eclectic childhood with parents that are kind of flighty and security is just not a part of her everyday life, but it really explores the fact that family and love can exist even in tough times. She tells good stories with not so good memories. Because of Winn-Dixie by Kate DiCamillo, this was a reread for me. The, lasa la the lasagnas. The lozenges, is that how you say it? I love those. They're meant to be like melancholy, so happy, but also sad. I feel like that's the general theme of this book. I love the community relationships that form in this book. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's a great middle grade or younger read. Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. We already talked about this, but apparently it was later down my list. Loved the exploration of grief. Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. I liked it more than the movie, which is saying a lot because I'm a huge fan of the movie. Additionally, I think the book developed characters more fully and was more aware of gender and the portrayal of it. If you've seen the video by Cold Crash Pictures discussing Jurassic Park, you will know that Ellie was the only adult female character in Jurassic Park, the movie, and she experienced everything secondhand 
through Alan's gaze. However, in the book, Ellie is much more of a character without Alan. They are not in a relationship. There are other female characters, and just generally, I enjoyed the book a lot more. There were more adventures, there were pterodactyls, there was a river raft. I, huh, I loved it. Becoming by Michelle Obama has been on my list for ages, and I just got around to it absolutely lives up to the hype. It was brilliant. Um, she's an incredible writer. She's an incredibly smart and clever person. In the words of my 8th grade social studies teacher, she would be the best president of the United States, but she's too smart to run. Franny and Zoe by J.D. Solinger. I love his use of italics. They're hilarious. If I read something and there are italics only on like half the word or in the middle of the word, I know it's J.D. Solinger. Additionally, I liked the sibling dynamic in this book, and he used a few footnotes and made fun of the fact that he used footnotes, which I just, I enjoyed too much. Next comes Beneath the Surface by John Hargrove, an exploration of a trainer, an ex-SeaWorld trainer, and just his experiences at SeaWorld training orca whales. It talks about orcas, how poorly they are treated at SeaWorld, their intelligence, their emotional capacity, and the relationships they form with trainers. It also is a call to action for what SeaWorld can do in the future to ensure that nothing as horrific as whales in captivity happens again. Such a fun age, but kind Kylie Reed, fantastic. It discusses performative activism. It shows the dynamic between a black babysitter and the white family that she is employed by. The mom in the white family seems to really want to get to know the black babysitter, but she doesn't seem to understand boundaries, and she only seems to be interested in the babysitter, whose name is Amira, because of a racist incident she experienced during her working shift. Next, we have The Shadows by Alex North, who also wrote The Whisper Man, the newest book that they have released. Not as good is the Whisper Man, but yeah, I don't even remember. Uh -huh, I don't even remember what it's about. There's like a copycat killer. I don't know. It was good at the time, but clearly it didn't stay with me, so it didn't resonate on a deeper level. The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern, one of my new favorite novels of all time. Incredibly magical. It follows a circus that only appears and is open at night from dusk until dawn. However, the circus is actually a venue for a competition between two of the people associated with it: Celia, the illusionist, and Marco, who's the assistant. To to the man who created the circus in the first place. However, things get tricky when they fall in love. The romance in this was shit, but everything else was great. This one's kind of random. Understanding the Book of Mormon. Um, I am an atheist, but I'm very interested in religion, and I think tolerance is really important, and I think it's easier to be tolerant and open when you know more about people who are dissimilar to you. So I make an extra effort to read books that are things I don't agree with, because I, I think that's important. I also live in a community very heavily populated by members of the LDS Church, so I think it's important to know your friends, and so I do. I do. I understand them better now, and that's cool. However, this book was definitely not written for atheists. It was written for other Christians, and there was definitely a bit at the end, like, talking about how you, too, can convert Mormons to the true gospel, and, like, I don't know about that. Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. I adore this. I think every feminist, specifically those who feel that intersectionality is key, which it is, should read this book. Chapters that specifically impacted me were uh, Black Girls Don't Have Eating Disorders and really any chapter on the topic of motherhood, housing, and food. Food deserts are a real issue. Normal People by Sally Rooney, a very hyped book. Uh, some people hate it. I personally loved it. I loved the writing style. This is really small detail, but like none of the dialogue was in quotation and I actually loved that. I felt it showed the flowing motion of the story much better. It is about a relationship between Marianne and Connell throughout secondary school and university. It takes place in Ireland. It's a really real relationship in my opinion and one that is not only about coming of age but also learning to leave behind things that helped you to do so. Learning that life continues to move on and that you can move with it. The Girl Who Drank the Moon. I'm actually reading this right now. Not finished yet. Really enjoyed enjoying it. When there's a swamp monster and the swamp monster's name is Glurk, you know it's gonna be good. Winnie the Pooh by A.A. Milne? A.A. something. The one, the first A is Alan, I think. I love Winnie the Pooh. I've gone to Disney World a couple of times, which is just a wonderful privilege, but um, my favorite ride has always been the Winnie the Pooh one. It's just like so cute and so nostalgic and I love it to bits and pieces. Despite the consumerist nature, it's surrounded by. Uh, my one gripe about Winnie the Pooh is where the heck was Tigger? 
There was no Tigger in there. Those are the 73 books I have finished, with the exception of The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Another book that I'm going to finish either today or tomorrow is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. This is a siren horror sci-fi book. Really cool, really science-y, and really good representation, like shockingly good. I'm really enjoying it. Alrighty, those are all of the books I have read during summer 2020's quarantine. Again, quarantine is ongoing. Wear your masks. You can get cool ones. There are cool masks out there. I saw one the other day that said 2020, written by Stephen King, directed by Quentin Tarantino, and I died. I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Alrighty, with that, I will say goodbye. I will see you all tomorrow with a couple of my friends, actually. This is a collaboration video, if you will, um, discussing what school is going to look like for us and how we're feeling about attending high school in the age of a pandemic. Yeah, that's all I got for today. Until tomorrow, stay well, and I will see you then.